taking the stage today, Mercury Rev and the band are with me now. Hello, Jonathan Grasshopper. How are you? Very well, thanks. You're right. You've got one, one well, mic each. We got, we, <laughs> we got a lot of mics here. Huh? <laughs> so you guys have been here a couple of hours and um, you've been sound checking. How's it sounding? Fantastic. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And um, obviously, you're back with the first new record in seven years. And I think there's this great quote I read, Jonathan, which said, uh, it was you saying, it's great to get out in the world again after being atop a mountain for seven years. I mean, have you kind of reacclimatized any, you know, any kind of pressure problems coming back down and getting into the, the live space and, you know, doing interviews and press and all that kind of stuff? It's easier to breathe down here. There's a lot, a lot more oxygen. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the record because it was the two of you kind of at the the creative controls um, production wise for the first time. Why and and how did that happen? Well, it was very organic. There, you know, we've worked with Dave Friedman, who is we've known since we were teens mm -hmm. and done everything together. Uh, but this time, just scheduling. Grasshopper became a father for the first time, and congratulations, very close Thank to you. home. So you were in the the cat skills, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Any sleep deprivation that you were having to deal with, Grasshopper, at that point? Yes, a lot. Yeah. Uh, does it does it help having had like years of touring under your belt? Yes, yeah, because you know <laughs> that lifestyle. You're kind of like you sleep when you can, so yeah, it just you know it, it, it's the same kind of deal. So it was quite familiar to you. Very familiar. And this record, you know, the, the one of the the themes in it is the creative relationship between the two of you, and and as you say, Jonathan, that goes back such a long way. Was it 1986 when you first met? Uh, it was 84. 84. So okay. we've been playing together since very late in 1984. And again, the years just kind of melt in and you... After a while, you don't realize you're playing with someone for 30 years. It's really just like looking at your right hand, you know. It, it's so natural. When we record, we really don't do a lot of talking anymore. We just play and we listen a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of te telepathy. Yeah. Sorry. Telepathy. And has your relationship changed over the years? I mean, how has it changed? Because it, it, it must adapt and, and change with life moving on. Well, I think when you begin, you know, you can see the big shiny red button on someone and you know, if I push that, I'm going to get quite a reaction. And as you go on through the years, you realize there's other ways to find your way inside of someone you're with, whether it's a you know, a musician or in a relationship. So you sort of steer clear of the big shiny red button. <laughs> so just stepping away. The, the sort of uh, friendship atomic clock moves back a few seconds. Yeah, you kind of know when things get too close together in the reactor, you know, that something's going to give. And in the past, you know, it, there have been those explosions. But these days, I, th I think we have a better understanding of what, things are going to sort of set each other off, you know. But every once in a while, you have no idea, and there it goes. <laughs> yeah. So what about recording then? You, As you say, you're not doing a lot of talking, just kind of playing. Tell me about your time in the studio working on, on this record. Um, you know, we were just, we would just play together back and forth, and once it got going, you know, it took a while to get going s several months. And then once we kind of dropped into it, it kind of came very, very easily. And um, a lot of the songs from The Light and You just, you know, kind of flowed out very naturally then. And it's coming out on Bella Union over here. You know, it's out now on Bella Union, um, which is a great label and a new home for you. What made it the right place? Everything, you know, everything about it. And actually it was our, it was our first call we were just getting done with most of the mixes, and we said, let's just call Simon and see. And, you know, he picked up the phone. He said, boys, if you send it to me literally, like in a half an hour, it's possible it could come out this year. If you don't, it'll have to wait. And we sent him basically a very rough demo. And in five minutes, he just called back. He says, I'm in. And that was it. And it was that organic, that natural, you know, and yeah. been quite inseparable since then. So Simon Raymond, who's the head of the label, you know, he's in, in the Cocteau Twins. And I wonder whether, had you kind of crossed paths with him at all, you know, in his, his kind of making music career before he started running the label and stuff? Not really, just we were really big fans. Yeah. Um, huge fans. And, um, and just, you know, the Cocteau Twins to us were like, gods and stuff you know just really 
really, you know, it's close to our hearts. Because so. I, I wondered if he was going to get a little mention in a Rainy Day record, because the, well, the, the track mentions a lot of your favourite bands, and I was kind of like waiting for Cocktail Twins, thinking maybe, maybe. Did he, did, he, did he ask at all? We came quite close. We mentioned Felt and a few other bands on 4AD and stuff that, yeah. you know, seem to live in a virtual astral vinyl space where they're still there. Maybe they haven't made it into many people's consciousnesses lately, but those bands are still there. It's still on the vinyl. You can still listen and sort of hear something 25, 30 years later that you didn't get when you were 16. Maybe you weren't supposed to get it when you were that young, but now I put them on and you just hear it and it's it's like hearing Beethoven for the first time on some of those records, you know, you just, you can't believe that the genius was there and you, you just were too young to process it at the time. You, you didn't speak that language yet, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You didn't have that downloaded software that could appreciate, you know, what some of those groups did that we were mentioning in the, in the song Rainy Day record. Yeah, it's a beautiful track, but I hear that you are um, more of a cassette man. Is that right? I am. It doesn't that sound strange? It's almost like a perversion or we something. Have, no, we have, a, we have a memory tapes feature on this show. We love a tape. We love a C90. There is something romantic about them, I think. It has to do with sort of the modern meditation of making a mixed cassette for your girlfriend or your boyfriend back in the day. It would take all day because you'd want to get it right, and then you'd screw up and to rewind and start again. And to me, that was almost a romantic ritual is making the mixtape and then making sure the girlfriend listened to the whole thing, all 90 minutes. Did you listen to side two? And, and it was all that, you know, you'd take it personally if they didn't get it, you know. No, I didn't get to side two yet. What? I spent five hours. <laughs> Jonathan, were you one of those ones who would, like, sit and listen with? Well, I just had that sort of feeling like, you know, it was probably very similar to when, you know, the girlfriend or the boyfriend cooks a really great meal and they've spent five hours making it and then you'd sort of gobble it down in 15 minutes and the girlfriend's just staring at you <laughs> boiling you know and again that that ritual of making the the mixed tape i think that was lost with the digital age you could sort of just drag and click drag and drop, yeah. yeah and you didn't have the time to really sort of almost plan an emotional trajectory of the mixed tape I love it. The physicality of it as yeah. well is really charming. Uh, so listen, what about your tour? Because you are over here doing some live dates. Um, how's it sounding? Where are you going to be? And, and what have you got planned? We did a couple gigs. Um, Leeds and Bristol, they were, they were amazing. And um, yeah, we're coming back in November. And we're going everywhere <laughs> that I can think of. Every city, but no, we'll be in London at the Oval Space. What is the date of that? I don't even know. November 24th. Ooh. November 24th. I think it's a, it might actually be all close to Thanksgiving for the U.S. Yes. So. A Thanksgiving special. You have to have a turkey. <laughs> well, listen, thank you very much for being with us today. We are delighted to have you here. Mercury Rev on Six Music. Cheers. Thanks. <laughs> 